Hello and welcome to another episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today we are taking a look at the Rocket Pro Gamera 1995 Guardian of the Universe figure. So I've already done an unboxing video of this guy, showing him off a little bit, but I just wasn't really happy with that. So I figured I would do a full review of this guy, just a little quick one here, just so you guys can really get a good sense of this guy, get to look at his details in much more clarity and all that good stuff. So, Rocket Pro, I know nothing about them. Uh, <laughs> this is just a random figure that I saw go on sale on eBay from some random seller, and I saw it, and I'm like, that looks cool. Gimme. Uh, it was... It was kind of expensive, but considering it's basically an X Plus figure, for all intents and purposes, uh, it's like 20, 25 centimeter scale X Plus style figure, it was for a fairly decent price, and I think it was well worth it, because actually having this thing in hand for a while, I really dig this thing. This is a great figure. So, Gamera, he's the other Godzilla. He's... The bootleg Godzilla that became almost as famous as Godzilla himself. Originally the gimmicky friend to all children in the 70s era of films, but then in the 90s he was brought back to life just as good, if not better, than the Godzilla movies of the time. And the first film that really gave Gamera that justice is the 1995 movie Gamera Guardian of the Universe and to this day that is my favorite Gamera movie and my favorite design of Gamera 2 and this figure captures that beautifully really really well. Gamera has just always had a fantastic design I think that's really what kept this character going even though he was so schlocky and really gimmicky in the early days and just really silly. Just the fact that they really nailed a really cool kaiju design of this thing. I mean, a giant, tusked, flying, fire-breathing turtle. Anyhow, so let's get to the figure itself. Uh, this is, like I said, basically an X-Plus figure. He's made of a hollow hard vinyl, just like your typical X-Plus. He's very well sculpted, and it's just yeah, a really freaking great X Plus style figure. I think I keep saying 25 centimeter scale because he does seem to measure a little bit shorter than what you'd expect for a 30 centimeter scale X Plus figure. And we'll do a whole size comparison and all that stuff later on. But uh, just in general, to give you guys an idea, he he does he does kind of scale up with like the 25 centimeter scale. Now, the the, the only one that I really have on hand close by is. Uh, this one here, which is the 25 centimeter scale Godzilla 2019 figure. This thing is almost 30 centimeters tall, though, in reality. In my videos on this thing, I should have mentioned this guy is basically the same scale as the Yuji Sakai modeling collection figures, because they're slightly uh, shorter than the typical 30 centimeter scale figures, but they are bigger than the 25 centimeter scale figures. So this gives you some idea of the scale between the two. Moving on to the figure itself. He is fantastically sculpted. Uh, this guy is clearly done hand sculpted and there's clearly a shit ton of detail work on this thing. Uh, I'll get to his face in a second but I just really wanted to show off the underside of his belly here. Look at the detail and the line work. All that effort putting in all of that detail work. It is phenomenal. Just even looking down his legs. Ah, oh, look at that. Just all the wavy lines. It is really, really freaking well done. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a Yuji Sakai sculpt going off of the detail work and the, the way he is sculpted. Really, really nice. So there we got his little face there. Again, all the wrinkles, all the detail work just around his eyes alone looks great. Even his tusks have some line work going through them to really add some depth to them. They have this sort of brown wash this nice bone color to them. I am not actually a fan of that bright white color for the teeth, nor am I a fan of that like really blood red that they use for the inside of his mouth. Like it's done, like the effect is nice that it's like this wash really brings out some of the detail work in his mouth, but the color alone, especially with that bright white of his teeth, 
it looks really toy-like. It looks kind of silly on this guy. Just to take a look at the Bandai Movie Monster Series figure, which I did a review on recently, or a video on recently. The inside of his mouth, much, much more nice. His teeth are done in this bone white color, and his mouth is done in this more orangey pink tone. It's a little bit more neutral colored, and it's a lot more natural looking. Whereas this sort of really bright red and the pure white on his teeth, eh, I don't, I don't know. It, I don't like it too much, to be honest. But the sculpt work in his mouth is beautiful. He's got the, all those membranes and all that sinews and things in there and they just they're done beautifully it looks really organic really accurate to the character uh, the eyes on them are actually painted really nicely really clearly as those classic green eyes that the Heisei Gamera does have uh, I love the detail work just around the back of his neck you can see all that wrinkling around the back of his neck detail work on the top of his head all this line work really accurate really well done yeah, very good hand-sculpted look to this thing. This little nose, nice sort of more bone-like shapes where you can see that where it's smooth. You can definitely kind of imagine it's more hard and bone-like around his face. And I love the tusks. It just There's just something with Gamera, like a turtle with tusks. It just looks brilliant. And the thing I love about the 1995 Guardian of the Universe design is later on I feel like they made the design look a little bit too menacing they try to make him look too badass in certain ways and some elements I liked like how they later on they gave him like elbow I for some reason in my other videos when I think I was talking about the Bandai figures I was saying shoulder claws but no yeah elbow spikes they gave him elbow spikes and I thought that was really cool like in the next film but they also made his head smaller and there's a thing that I don't know I've never been a huge fan of how they kept making Godzilla and Gamera's head really small. I think the reason they did it was to make him look more massive in proportion, just like making his body look massive, just to give him more of an effect of looking like a giant kaiju. But I don't know, I really like the proportions on this design. And he has like kind of like the Showa Gamera proportions, but just they're refined to look like, you know, an actual menacing kaiju that you can take seriously. And I, I like the nice big eyes on them, they're very expressive, and it's just yeah, so brilliantly put together. So I do really like the other designs in the other two films because they did change them up with uh, each film in that uh, the Gamma trilogy from the uh, 90s. But whatever reason, Guardian of the Universe just is my favorite design. Now back to the, the detail work on this figure. The one thing that I particularly love on this thing is just his hands. They're very expressive and they look very powerful. So you can actually tell the difference between Godzilla and Gamera's hands because Gamera actually has five fingers or four fingers and one thumb if you prefer. Unlike Godzilla who has always canonically had four fingers which is like the Simpsons which is just a little difference that you can make out there but yeah I love the claws on these things that tipped off in a nice glossy bone finish with some brown wash over them to make them look nice and weathered uh, looks really natural really great and just the detail work all down these hands you can see yeah so much effort put into this thing it was really beautiful really really great same on this arm here the same level of detail is achieved all the way down his legs you can really get up close here and you can just see it's so rough but it just makes this thing so appealing to just gaze over because there's so much going on with this detail here it's messy but it's not it's ca messy and chaotic but it looks it's it, it's not overdone in a way it just looks really good that said i feel like something about the way the paintwork is done on him uh could have been done a little better because the chaos with like all the detail in his sculpt does get sort of overshone with some of the paintwork on him like particularly like I was saying in his mouth there and I feel like even though I love this brown on his chest something about when I first saw him it did look a little bit messy uh, with just all the little scratches and detail work in there with like the black wash in there as well I don't really know why but like uh, after sitting with it for a little bit that effect is kind of uh, numbed out and, and kind of disappeared and now he's a little bit more cohesive in my eyes and I 
I kind of like the whole look of him, but I, again, I'm still not overly sold in that bright red. Around the back, we can can see his really cool trilobite-like shell. I really like, again, the Heisei-era Gamera's. They had this really cool uh, plate armor shell, which really does look like a trilobite, which is just a cool little uh, bit of design work, a little bit of detail work on this design that just really makes it that extra bit special. Some of the early Gamera's, they just had like big scales uh, going down the shell, the Showa-era Gamera. I do really like that kind of look, but this is just, it's got a cool vibe, because I, I like Trilobites. <laughs> and we get his kind of stumpy tail here. It's got a really, again, nice rough texture, almost looks like stone. These sort of really rough, chaotic scales. Very accurate to how it looked in the film. Sculpted really beautifully. Again, we look at the underside of his tail, and we've got this more flat detail work, but even when the tail presses to the ground, there's still rough details there, which is really sweet that they did that. But under his feet, we just get nice smooth detail, a lack of detail, I should say. And then we got the Rocket Pro logo, made in China, 1995, something, some other stuff written there. Nothing on this foot here. There you go, that gives you a nice idea of all the detailing down him. I also love the barnacle effects they added to the shell, because he's got these cool rough patches, which is something they do a lot on X-Plus figures, like on the smooth areas of X-Plus figures, they also love to add little rough details, which are usually very accurate to how the creatures actually looked in suit form in the actual movies, which is really nice. Got a nice edging around the shell here. Very cool. Oh, look at those neck details too. Brilliantly done. This thing is fabulous. But again, that chest, just the patterns there, the, these details are so fine and beautifully done. It looks almost like a real creature. It's brilliant. Love it. Really, really cool. Nice, really close up look in the mouth. It does look really gross and fleshy. Which I kind of like, but like that effect looks better on like Shin Godzilla, for example. And not really on Gamera 1995, Guardian of the Universe, it's just, it's a bit much, and the white teeth, yeah, they, it just doesn't work. But, in general, really, really great detail work on this thing. I do have some minor gripes with, from the side, his shell kind of, it feels squished right around where his legs start to come out of his shell here. This area here, I feel like, it was a little bit squished in the film compared to what you kind of expect, but it was slightly more rounder. There was a bit more bulk down here. It just looks really weird and thin, where he's got the most of, it, of his mass in his upper body here, and just really thin shell. That's really kind of nagging at me when I look at this thing from the side, and it makes me wonder, was this figure kind of squished accidentally, or is this an intentional feature in the sculpt? I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. What I've been thinking of doing is getting a hairdryer, heating up the body here, and actually seeing if that'll help puff out the shell a bit more. I could even uh, pop the tail off, because this guy's tail actually arrives separately, and actually like try and physically push the shell out a bit more through the hole there. I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to it, uh, but that's just something in theory that I do want to eventually try. Before we get into our size comparison, I do want to compare this guy to some other Gamera figures that I happen to have in my collection. So I do actually have the most Gamera figures of this design, so that makes it kind of convenient that we can actually compare them to two other figures. So we have the Bandai Movie Monster series figure and the SH Monster Arts figure. Now, SH Monster Arts originally put out the Gamera vs. Legion figure, so the second film in the Gamera trilogy, where they actually did slightly change up the design. Like I said, they made his head smaller, and they gave him shoulder spikes in that film, which were, you know, it's a beautiful, really cool design too. And they ended up actually reusing the same body and legs and arms from that figure and tail, almost identically, except for they got rid of the shoulder spikes and they just changed up the head. And they actually changed the paintwork on him a little bit. And then recently, I got the Bandai Movie Monster series figure, which, even though it is just a simple Bandai vinyl figure, you know, it's a soft vinyl figure, uh, fairly cheaply made, 
These things are actually pretty expensive to get in my corner of the world for what they are, but like compared to other figures, they're known as like the cheap collectible. Despite that, this one I just thought really captures the look of the 1995 Gamera. Especially just his face there. Again, the paintwork on him is really simple. He's mostly done in just this flat gray. Uh, the details aren't as sharp or as clear as the other two figures here, but something about him just really captures just the personality of this camera. And then, then I actually found this guy shortly after getting this one, and I thought, you know what? Let, let's see what this one's like, and I think they did a pretty stellar job with this, especially with the sculpt. Like, basically, this guy is just like the X-plus equivalent of the 1996 camera. Although I hope to one day actually get an X-plus version of that guy. Uh, but this one seems to be the next best thing. Anyhow, let's do a little size comparison and then I'll finish up the review. I hope you guys enjoyed that little size comparison there. You got to gauge whereabouts this guy stands. Again, I think he is slightly bigger than your typical 25 centimeter series X Plus figures, but he is a bit smaller than what you'd expect for a 30 centimeter scale figure. And especially with him being a Gamera figure, it's hard to gauge because Gamera is always slouched over a bit. And especially with this really wide posture of this guy here. Uh, it does mean that scaling him is a little bit tricky sometimes. So what I have just done is I brought in two other figures which are kind of significant I think because one they're also Gamera figures and the reason I wanted to talk about them is this one here is also a figure that's basically an X plus figure but it's not an X plus figure. So here we have the Sega Showa Gamera figure which is basically pretty damn spot on to being an X plus of the Showa version of Gamera and expect, except for this one the scales more on the 30 centimeter scale whereas this one's a little bit shorter here but you can definitely see the differences between the more goofy sort of simplified earlier Gamera era design and then the later 90s Gamera era design and again if we roll them around to the back you can see this guy's got those really cool scales running down his back that was uh, typical to the Showa design and then we turn this guy over and we have that carapace trilobite plate armor design. I adore both actually. I'm a, b a big fan of all versions of Gamera. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys the difference there. So we'll take him out of the picture. And this guy I actually wanted to talk about just briefly. Because I actually forgot to bring him out earlier. He's my other Gamera 1995 figure. Except for this guy is actually a bootleg. Uh, a bootleg vinyl kit version of what was originally a Bandai vinyl, a really huge Bandai vinyl. However, they converted it into a uh, vinyl kit and have been selling these from Thailand. You can get a lot of really cheap, really cool bootleg vinyl model kits from... They always seem to sell from Thailand for some reason, uh, from eBay. And that's where I picked up this thing. He is huge really huge. He's also very stylized, you can tell he's not very accurate, especially compared to the the new Movie Monster series. We can bring that, the new version in here. So this guy, very accurate, he just looks like he walked out of the film almost. Although he's a little bit simplified and made a bit more cutesy toy form, you know, soft final, a bit more rounded off, all that good stuff. But this guy here, he's a lot more stylized. Now, the paintwork on him uh, and the assembly I did myself, so uh, the paintwork on the original figure would have been different, especially with the like the white eyes. What I actually did, which is the predominant difference between this thing and the Bandai vinyls, the the real ones, is I modified the tusks and the teeth. Originally, this guy, the tusks were actually molded into the side of his face, and there was like a big plastic chunk right in the corner of his mouth here, attached to his teeth, 
his tusks and the side of his mouth. So I actually cut them out, freed them, and re-sculpted in some detail into like the corners of his mouth. And I also cut out all his teeth and made his tongue a little bit more separate. Because uh, originally those were all like a, a block of plastic like you'd expect from a Bandai vinyl. So there we go. You can kind of see what he looks like now with the separated tusks and the teeth. Now his eyes, I was actually intending on painting them, but uh, I painted them white and I kind of liked the look of it, so I ended up leaving it like that. There you guys go. So you see... In the corner of his mouth, that detail there, I sculpted that in, and these tusks would have been actually attached to the side of his face, but I, like, bent them outwards a bit, and cut them out first, obviously, and bent them outwards a bit. And also cut out the little teeth. Yeah, this is just my other 1995 Gamera Guardian of the Universe figure, and I just wanted to compare him to this guy here, just to just kind of show you that this one is very movie accurate. Whereas this guy is very stylized, but they're both really sweet figures. And uh, if you are into building kits and stuff, I highly recommend getting a hold of one of these. They're pretty cool. I especially love the shell here. Yeah, it's just, it's really like <laughs> armored looking. It's really cool. Anyhow, to sum up, this guy, I'm really happy with this thing. The longer I have this on hand, the more I like it. This is just essentially an X Plus figure. If you manage to find this guy for the same value or less than you'd expect for a retail price of like your typical 25 centimeter x plus figure, then I'd say definitely worth picking up. Again, just for the freaking detailing of this thing. Now I have some minor gripes, like I said, the shell is looks a bit squished at the back here, too close to his legs, it looks a bit weird from the side, and some of the paintwork like in his mouth looks a bit off. and. I don't know, just has some minor little nitpicky detail things which just maybe in the face just don't look 100% accurate but like I am nitpicking by like a percent there. Yeah in general this thing is really gorgeous, great looking figure. I recommend them. I like this thing. It's pretty cool. That is it for my little review of the Rocket Pro Gamera 1995 Guardian of the Universe figure. I hope you like this video. If you do, be sure to like and or subscribe, and I hope to see you in one of my future videos. But until then, may all your vinyl be a radiated vinyl. Over and out.